I'm ready. Oh, finally. <laughs> Hello, Goyles. Welcome to the party. Don't you be sitting too far behind me. I refuse to look like a gentle giantess. What? So you look like one Are we on the same plane? Chris, you tell me if I look huge. Because <laughs> that, that sounds like you're walking him into a problem. You want him to say, Do you know what I mean? Are we on the same? Yeah, like huge. Are we on the same plane? What happened to muting him before he put his hat on? Lizzie. (laughs) I'm going to kick you out of this podcast. Fine, here I go. Do you really want me to go? She's already hitting me with some sass last night. No, shh. Last night? Oh, I forgot. I was like, is 10.30 a.m. good? And Lizzie's like, oh, I guess. And I was like, I don't need you. I'll do a solo episode. Um, All right. Well, do you have anything to say? Fuck you. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by Elizabeth Gordon. Hello, hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm tired. Of course, you are. I'm tired. Do you? Well, okay. I'm tired because my husband needs to get his own fucking bedroom. What? <laughs> and I'm sick and tired of him ruining my goddamn fucking life. <laughs> if you were going to the Padre, you'd just get a whole new house. Like Loki, mm. might have to. <laughs> And we can do like visits or What's something. What's going on? This motherfucker will come to bed at 3.30 at night and just take the loudest piss in the world with the door up and going, Ugh. He's grunting? Bro, moaning, full blown. Uh, uh, uh. Has he held it the entire I'm like, night? I'm trying not to be a bitch, but I'm like, what's up, dude? Like, why are you moaning? Because why are you fucking moaning? It's 3.30 in the morning. Don't fall asleep on the couch and come in here. Scream moaning at 3.30 in the morning, he bitch. He can't use the, the other bathroom before That's what I'm saying. There are so many fucking considerate options before he comes into the room where I am <laughs> sleeping at 3.30 in the morning, knowing full well I wake up in like two and a half hours. They'll never understand. Wait, Wait, I'm sorry. What's happening? He's just helping our frame. Oh. Um... Wow, that was as disruptive of someone scream moaning in the middle of the night. <laughs> you are on edge. I am. I'm fucking tired. So he comes in scream moaning. And I'm like, what's up? Like, are you OK? He goes, what are you doing? And, uh, and snaps at me like I've done something wrong, even though I'm the one who's been sitting in there sleeping like a helpless fucking victim <laughs> while he's scream moaning. And then this morning, I'm like, I, so I moved. I left like and then he like lays facing me and immediately starts scream snoring at me. I've got a fucking face mask on. I've got a pillow over my head. I've got music playing so that I can just drown his fucking ass out. And no matter what, this bitch has, is just set on fucking up my sleep every fucking night. And then acts indignant in the morning when I wake, when I wake up, when I need to wake up to start living my fucking life. He's like, can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> I could kill this man. I could literally kill this fucking guy. And then, and then has the audacity when he does wake up, he goes, sorry for whatever you're mad about. Oh. Are you broken, dude? Like, are you fucked in the head? What's going on here? What the fuck is this shit? Do you see what I am? I'm livid. I am livid. So you're about to move into your office. No, he's about to move into his office. I'm sick of this. He doesn't make my bed. He, I bought that bed. That's my bed. If we're going to be real. Well, this is like divorce talk. Like, I've had enough. I've had quite enough. I'm fucking tired. And then I get up in the morning and throw all of his fucking cans away. He like I made I slaved over dinner last night for Easter. I slaved. I made a shrimp boil for us, and it was beautiful and it was everything. And then like in my heart of hearts, I'm like, you know, I slave over this. I cleaned all the pots after I cooked. This bitch could just fucking put it away. And what does he do? He just puts the full display tray in the fridge and then screams about how there, there's no space in the fridge. Do you know how many Tupperwares we have that would have fit this shrimp nicely? <laughs> I saw an Instagram story recently of like, hey, babe, can you put that the left? Can you clean up after dinner? And it's like just the full blown. That's Joe. Joe would put the whole fucking oven in the in the fridge if he could get it there. (laughs) It's crazy. And I'm positive something's dead behind our oven. And I've been saying it for fucking weeks. I've been like, yo, it stinks like death behind that bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Can one of the men in this room please do something about the death smell? Coming from the back of the fucking oven. (laughs) And Joe, who's got super smell strength. And doesn't allow me to burn candles or wear perfume. Is like, I don't smell anything. (laughs) Like, what the fuck? The gaslighting, guys. The gaslighting. I fucking can't. I, too, have, like, 800 half-drink Baja Blast Zeros in my fridge. Because it's like, Shane decides he's done, but he just leaves them in there. But it's like, he's never going to revisit it. No. And he's never going to have to open the fridge that 
and need anything else in there. No. Like my dog food's in the fridge and I almost knock all of those over trying to maneuver the dog food out every single day. And I'm like, if one of these spills and I have a Baja blast all over the floor while I'm trying to feed five animals, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to walk out of the house as well. It's over. We're, we're roommates. <laughs> We're fucking roommates. We're buying my old house and we're moving the fuck in together. This is tragic. I'm so, I'm so done. I'm so done. And I'm also practicing this thing where I don't talk about it with him because what's the fucking point? What's the fucking point? You got to pick your battles. You got to pick your battles. It falls on deaf ears, but I swear to God, this bitch is going to get fucking murdered. Yeah, there's some things too that I just have to realize like, I'm in charge of picking up the kitchen after we've ruined it at yeah. night. Like, yeah. Because if I wait until he wakes up, it's then noon. And then it's like he needs to, like, by the time destroy he becomes alive, yeah. it's 4 p.m. And then it's like, yeah, it's time to destroy it again. So I would have waited till 4 p.m. And we're going to destroy it again in an hour after yeah. everybody's come to my house. And I'm not that kind of person where I can just let all of you come over to the house and be a fucking disaster. Well, and that's the other thing. So he's had all these people coming to the house for their production because our house is not production headquarters and it's like i'm mortified there's piss in his toilet he's not flushing bro he never flushes his and he's and i don't give a fuck joe if this is embarrassing flush your fucking toilet <laughs> just flush your fucking toilet he has the bathroom in the house that everybody has access to and i was like i'm gonna let except you have this for bathroom, when he wants to go to bed at 3 a.m except for when he needs to go to bed at 3 a.m and that's when he wants to use my squatty potty and scream moan <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, when we moved in, I was like, okay, motherfucker, this is the bathroom that guests are going to use when they come here. Keep it fucking nice. I'm not going in there. Keep it fucking nice. And he cannot do that. You know, I refuse to pee in our like guest bathroom. Like I won't even yeah. use it. I walk all the way to my office. Like I take a 30 second detour <laughs> because I will not pee in there because I feel like with the boys, it's like, they're not aiming, especially <laughs> Shane. And it's like that whole wood floors filled with piss Joe, and it's like i'm not gonna step on my fucking socks in piss floor <laughs> so i don't use that bathroom and i advise you not to use it either i it's the only bathroom that he will like because we don't have five bathrooms we have two well but the one in your bedroom he yeah. can walk out of his way to go to that i would rather die than share a fucking <laughs> bathroom with him because i did it for seven years <laughs> and i know what that entails and i'm not i'm not for it and he's right now i bet you anything in my bathtub there's a huge fucking like farmer's bag of Epsom salts just all over the floor in my bathroom because he wants to take Epsom salt baths all the time now. Mm. So I can't do anything in the morning because he's like, well, I wanted to take a bath. Then get a bathtub. Get your own fucking bathtub. Chris, is this making you enjoy living alone? <laughs> um, or do you annoy yourself? <laughs> no, I mean, there's a lot of positive things to living alone for sure. And this is reminding me. Do you of those see things. my face? Do you see my eyes? <laughs> do you see any life left in them? <laughs> This is what cohabitation does. It slowly sucks the life from your body. Well, this is why Shane and I work well, because we're opposites as people, but we also have opposite schedules. Yeah, I mean, do, when he comes to bed, is he screaming? It's awful. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what do we do? If it's not the flashlight in my eye, yeah. it's him trying to move over Riley, or it's like Uno sleeping on his pillow, or there's like a huff and a puff because something's not right. Yeah. And I'm like, just go into bed like i leave in the morning yeah stealthy and quiet yeah. without any lights the fuck man oh well what the fuck okay so <laughs> let's talk about your old house i know you've been scream <sighs> crying all weekend i start crying right now <laughs> <laughs> could be good for our thumbnail so my old house that i loved where you know i you met, got you met joe i met joe at that house in the backyard got proposed to got proposed to the backyard crying already it's my house, motherfucker. It's my fucking house. Um, yeah, the I know I've never lived anywhere as long as I lived there in my entire life. I've never lived in a house as long as I lived in that house. That right. was my first home. And it was taken from me. Well, they sold it to a developer who now They has sold it to it. a developer who flipped it for and now they're selling it for three million dollars. It's and listen, they redid it beautifully. Yeah. Like we went over there and it wasn't an open house. So did I overstep boundaries and like there's walk no in gate. the backyard? There's no and gate. Like if in? they didn't want you to do that, they'd have added a gate. So yes, I like basically broke into this house and they did <laughs> do like a quality upgrade. It's beautiful. However, $3 million. Bro, 
three million dollars and then they had an open house after you and i went so i went to the open house by myself and in my head the whole time i was like don't tell them you used to live here don't tell them you used to live here don't tell them you used to live here and then someone was like hi and i went i used to live here <laughs> she's like oh i was like yeah i lived here for seven years it's the longest i ever lived in a house i met my husband in the backyard we got engaged back there this is where i fell in love with him and, and this lady's thinking get the home. fuck out of my house while i have like, all these other people that are potential liars <laughs> literally and she's like you look poor <laughs> Oh. You don't look like you're part of. I'm trying to think if maybe I could convince my rich stepmom to buy the house back for me, and she's like, "Leave, dude. What the fuck? I'm like, there was a door over there and a hall right there, and down that hall, my French bulldog Jelly would run to greet me. Uh, it was pathetic. It, it really isn't fair because it's a it's a beautiful location. You have a park right across the street. I'm gonna haunt like- it. As an alive person, I'm gonna haunt that fucking property. You're gonna become the watcher. I am the watcher now, bitch. <laughs> I'm literally like I was thinking about. I was like, do I just collect a bunch of bloody tampons and like once a month just throw them at the windows? <laughs> like, what kind of crazy bitch fuckery should I do? Like, do I leave dead rats behind the oven at the next open house? It's just wild to me that even in this market, <laughs> what do I do? Probably should I bring my dead someone. rats from my house to the new to the old house <laughs> and leave them around so the buyers are uninterested because it just reeks of death and there should i stay crying like moaning myrtle in the bathrooms <laughs> like what's the plan how do i drop the price so that i can afford it i don't know i was touring houses i couldn't afford this weekend and i was really <laughs> contemplating like a one-time sex tape just to see like if i can afford the down payment jesus you know it's my toxic trait that i just go to houses i can't afford for but fun. you think about sex tape to make that happen yeah well when i'm in it if i like the house do you enough, think that I'm we like, could make a sex tape make together quick cash fast do you think it could be you and me I don't know. With, or I don't if, know. like, is, I bring no one is to there a the market? table. <laughs> is there a market for me fucking Ryland on the internet? Or is it just, you guys just want to see him fucking shame? That's cool. I get it. My name doesn't have the value, but it's like, I have the want. <laughs> Sad. 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 I'm so excited because today's podcast is sponsored by SeatGeek, and it is how Lizzie and I ultimately ended up getting to see Taylor Swift live. And you know, I'm dying to go again. I cannot just go once to this era's tour. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. With artists like Taylor Swift, Drake, Beyonce, and Blink-182 on tour, you're not going to want to miss out. I love SeatGeek because they put all of the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means you're getting a great deal, red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know SeatGeek has come through for all of you guys. Use code SIP for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code SIP. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the fantastic app and get $20 off your tickets. Hi, ladies. I'm super excited to talk to you this week about Honey Love Shapewear. They sent me a pair of their shorts and oh my God, I am living for it. If you know me, you know I've started struggling with chafing between my thighs and the Honey Love Shapewear goes straight down my thigh and gives me a beautiful shape while also protecting my inner thighs from a little bit of rubbing, which I love. I'm also not big on shapewear. I've tried a lot of different brands. I find that I struggle with them holding me in in the wrong places and then rolling down and sort of creating like extra lines under my clothing that I don't love. And what I really appreciate about the Honey Love Shapewear is the boning in the front that keeps my top half nice and tight while also a little bit of release in my booty so that I get the full moment of my voluptuous womanly curves that I love without like suppressing them. And another really cool thing about the booty is it has booty boost, which is this like new technology, I guess, in shapewear that just lifts your butt a tiny bit without compressing it so you get the full oomph in your trunk. And I really love that. Like I said before, I'm not big on shapewear, but when I tried these on for the first time, I actually felt more confident in the dress that I was wearing to go to this barbecue this weekend. And I think this is something I'm gonna find myself going to over and over again, because not only is it comfortable on my legs, but it just makes my tummy just a little bit softer in a dress that's like sort of cinched around my waist. And I really, really like that. And it also has this interesting thing where I don't really know how to describe it, but like the crotch opens up so it's not a nightmare to have to go pee in this piece like you don't have to snap and unsnap it to sort of give yourself the freedom to use the bathroom at a function which is a huge deal 
and shapewear, if you ask me. I've worn a lot of different kinds. I find myself struggling in a bathroom with something that's way too tight because it's supposed to be hugging me in and making the like snaps snap. So I'm a big fan of this pee hole. Treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com with the code SIP. Again, that's code SIP to get 20% off of your shapewear at honeylove.com. I went nuts this morning because for some reason I woke up really early. So I finished like the pre-production for the show really early. And then I started looking around and I was like, oh, I got to just start cleaning this house. I got it like, this is not okay. I got to clean this house. So I was like cleaning the litter box like a maniac. And then I was like, these air filters are not well. These are what are making me like have allergic reactions. Yeah. So then I'm like putting up ladders like 20 minutes before this show and like changing my air filters going wild and crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm fine too. We're great. <laughs> We're doing good. Yeah. So you had a good Easter? Well, I'm just sick. You're sick. I like I I understand you on a different level. I don't think I've oh, overdosed on sugar. Sugar specifically. Like, oh, it's gnarly. We went over to Shane's mom's house and she had like prepared such a platter of food. Like box brownies are my number one love in life. And I don't make those. She made box brownies and like cut them up in beautiful squares. Yeah. <sighs> There was just so much <laughs> good food. And then I had gotten Shane like a few Easter things, even though we like vowed to not do Easter this year with oh, each other. Oh, really? Yeah, because like we both got really busy and he was like, I have a confession to make. Like I haven't done what I normally do. And I was like, you need to chill the fuck out. The guilt I have for like the gift giving you do to me yeah. constantly is nuts. And let's just wait till we have a kid. But I had to go get a prescription because I'm like now on prescription drugs for my allergies because oh. it wasn't getting better. Thank oh. God I'm like fine because it, it got to the point where I wasn't even able to talk without coughing. Like, have you had that kind of cough? No. It's like a talk. Never. Wow. You're I kind of feel Count like maybe right now, but I might just be a sympathy cough. Chris, you guys have never gotten a cough oh. where like your talk provokes it. Yes. And then it's impossible. to My exist. singing provokes yeah. coughing. Of fits. course. Yeah. On my end so <laughs> that I can't hear it. Just kidding. <laughs> Love you so much. Um. <laughs> But then, yeah, I got him like one of those big Reese's eggs and one of those chocolate Easter bunnies. And I don't think I eat like that kind of sugar often. Hella processed. And I just couldn't stop. And then I was sugar sick and I just couldn't move from the couch. And I felt like you just like screaming out to the world that I'm sick. <laughs> I'm sick. That's what you do every time I eat with you. I go too hard. <sighs> and my week's just been filled with like depressing old girl things. What else? Just like. So, On, like, I woke up this morning, my knee hurt like a motherfucker. I would, couldn't turn certain directions without my knee being like, what the fuck, bitch? And I was like, is this because I had to sleep on the fucking couch? Because <laughs> my knee hurt because I had to sleep on the fucking couch. And more, my husband came in and assaulted me in the middle of the night. More grounds for divorce. I'm serious. I've been like <laughs> trying to deal with my will. We've yeah. been like trying to get that squared away. And that's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. I've been doing taxes. Like who wants to do taxes? No one. Oh, literally no one it's like not only are taxes due but like first quarter taxes are yeah due, so then i'm hit from all angles and i'm like i'm like Ugh. what are we even doing here i don't we're not we're not doing anything good it's nothing good i had um a christmas movie meeting this weekend really yeah okay i sent them the script this morning and that's it well what was the meeting like um so my god brother's friend i guess is a fan of yours and so recognized me <laughs> when I liked something that he was tagged in. They made a short film together and I liked it. And so she scrolled to it and was like, how do you know her? That's Rylan's friend. Because <laughs> she remembered me from that. Do you remember when you, when I was like, let's go Christmas shopping and oh, you vlogged vlog, it? Like years and years and ago. And then you went and showed my hideous fucking car. Oh, that was the piss crazy. Missile. So we're sitting there and she's like, I just saw that car. And I was like, that is so fucked up. This girl is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cool. Yeah, that's the piss missile. Uh, and you're a little She's like, you now. had water bottles with cigarettes in them. I just thought that was so funny. That was like a, <laughs> that was a car dumpster. Like you were like that was a car you were like dumpster. swimming. She had to open and like swim to get in her seat. We and literally like, we called it the piss missile, and that was the piss missile. Like it was just full of water like bottles. That? I didn't give a fuck. But I oh, that's so funny that you say how could you live like that? I've been low key living like that in my house lately because I'm just like fuck it. If I'm not gonna clean and this motherfucker's not gonna clean, nothing's gonna be clean. I have an idea for our TikTok. Oh yeah, because we have a TikTok now. We have a TikTok now. What? Well, <laughs> do you want to? Are you chill? Yeah, but I was in the middle of something. Are you pivoting? Well, no. I, this just reminded well, me. That's the warmest. I was mom. saying because we have a TikTok. Yeah. Julia's house. Julia Fox's house tour went viral for being messy. Maybe right. that's like. Something that could make our account gain some traction. Oh, do you want me to show you my house? You're just doing house? like a natural, okay. no clean house tour on our okay. TikTok. Oh, 
Okay. On our sip talk. Sip talk. Fucking username was taken. So the username was taken. Oh, I'm sorry fuckers. to derail. Can you, I like put a pin in it and you'll come right yeah, back to it? Yeah, because I want to say something about the TikTok Tim. Okay. So our TikTok formerly known as user 824572036. Lightning bolt. <laughs> that we accidentally made a TikTok on that kind of went viral for Hello a non-account. 10,000 views. Like, <laughs> no, it's 14,000. Uh, we rebranded that account to... The sip it? talk. No, the sip, the podcast. sip podcast. I wanted sip talk, <laughs> and I thought I was so original and unique. I was like sip talk, like so cool. And no, it was taken. And Lizzie's new job, on okay. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out what our talk TikTok Lizzie's, is called. Lizzie's new job on this podcast is creating clips from this podcast to go on TikTok. Correct. So we and have generating a content. Follow it. Follow it. Follow us for more. And between our show clips. Lizzie's gonna uh, make us do TikToks. Yeah, we have one planned, right? Yes. Okay. Um, what was I saying before? Your house—that's a disaster. No, it was the meeting with this girl that led to your house. The Sip Podcast is the name of our TikTok. But what were we talking about before? Oh yourself. no, the revelation I had about what you just said about like living in filth. It's like obviously I'm depressed and I'm fucking exhausted because I'm not allowed to sleep anymore. And I'm just, I, you know, still very sad about Jelly. And mm -hmm. like, just, well, I think probably the old, looking at the old house is probably bringing a lot of this back for you. Yeah, as well. it's awful. But I had this epiphany where it's like, dude, what? Like, who cares? Who cares that you're fucking sad? You don't deserve to live in filth. You don't deserve it. Yeah. So get the fuck up and clean your house. Even if you don't fucking want to, you can clean your house without needing the will to clean your house. Just get up and do it. Yeah, put on a podcast. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. You don't have to want to do it to get it done. Just do it. Yeah. And I had the same thing because it's like I stopped brushing my teeth for like three days. And I was like, this is dark. Like, this is really dark. <laughs> and it doesn't feel good. And I just lay in bed thinking, wow, I really should just brush my teeth and just never did. I like teeter on the edge of like waiting for the inspiration or the energy to hit versus like just get up and start some momentum because like with me in editing if i find an editing groove i can accomplish in three hours what would take me 10 hours if i was unmotivated yeah you know so it's like yes i like push through those days where i like can't find a flow and it's like worth it i guess but like even this morning when like I just got this burst of energy and I'm like fucking cleaning the air vents. Yeah. It's, I don't know. No, I mean, I spent four hours on TikTok one day. Yikes. Literally. I am and then it's like, what What are you doing, dude? Mm -hmm. Brush your fucking teeth. Clean up your husband's mess. Murder him. Discard <laughs> the body behind the oven where no one else can smell it but you. You know what I mean? You have shit to do, like bitch. Already rancid back there. You deserve a good life. Kill your husband. Okay, let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> You better hope to God nothing ever happens you to him. You know he doesn't watch this podcast. I know, but I'm saying if anything were to ever happen to him, the cops would come to that, this. They're always going to come to this. The wife is the first suspect whenever the fuck anyway. What is this going to do? All I'm doing, they're going to find me for the watcher stuff. But no matter what they were going to ask about me murdering my husband. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everyone saw that. I coming. have a more simple solution and it's just like, get away instead of killing him. Where am I going to go? Here? Sure. Could you handle that? Uh, probably not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I love you so much. I could just isolate in one of the rooms. You'd never know I was there. Like a dead rat behind a stove. I saw the Mario <laughs> just movie. Just stinking. You saw it? Uh -huh. Did you like it? No. You liked it. Everyone else was like, that's trash. Did you see it, Chris? I did. Oh, my gosh. Okay, at least I have somebody else to talk to it about. I feel like Chris is less of a hater, too. Like, I feel like if you would have saw it, you would have critiqued it as though it's like I the, just have no the world's biggest... Do you not like Mario? Do you not, no, did you, you not know play I don't. it growing up? No, I didn't So then you would up. be a hater. And that's my problem with all these people that, that are like critics that are reviewing it horribly, saying like, it's the worst movie ever. I'm like, have a glass of fucking wine and relax, bitch. It's a family <laughs> movie. It delivers on exactly what it's supposed to be, which is like a good time with some good Easter eggs. And I think the score of it, like tying in with the actual game, but being different enough is fantastic. I saw a lot of people saying like, it doesn't have a storyline. Well, guess what? It does have a fucking storyline. <laughs> what is it? It's Simple, but there's a storyline. What uh, What's the storyline? Bowser is coming to like kidnap Peach to marry her, and he's gonna take over the beautiful kingdom, and she has to like save her kingdom and her people. But there's also and like a little sub storyline too. But it's just like whatever, you guys, just chill the fuck out. And guess what, critics, audiences don't agree because it's gonna be like one of the top 
in grossing movies of the year. It already made. I just I feel like grossing doesn't have to do with good though. But people are enjoying it. Like the audience score oh, is ninety six. So people cute. like watching. Then it. why are you mad? Because <laughs> I'm mad that people are so mad. Well, how many critics do you read? Like, is this like an overwhelming critical pan, or are you? Re- it's pretty like critically like demolished, right? It is? Like it has like a fifty percent on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics. Interesting. What did you think, Chris? Well, I saw it with my boyfriend and the whole family, which is fun because it's like seven people in a theater, and it was a packed theater, and I think it was like the right environment. There were a lot of kids and a lot of families and like the kids when the movie ended like erupted in applause and were screaming and like lost it like they loved it yeah I mean I did too and loved it. Rylan's much like a child we walked way. out and Shane was like you were acting like a child and I was like I know it got me like the things got me like when they're like Shane. I had a great time and I was like oh this is something I'm going to show my kids once they're like a little older because it's just yeah. a fun movie I just don't like the agendas people put on things because they're saying they're like trying to make it political oh, and, trying to make it, ah, and I'm just yeah. like, all of you guys need to take a fucking break. Also, not everything has to be political. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we can just make a movie that's just like a fucking and movie and, just, and it has nothing to do with a social issue or, you know, the ev- every you know, the suicidal star, though. Do you remember that? What? There was like a blue star that's like de- suicidally oh. depressed. <laughs> yes, yes, I do remember. And like straight up in a kid's movie, the star is like, they're like, w- they're trapped and, and like they're going to die seemingly. Yeah. They're like Bowser's going to get rid of them. They're like, what's the point? And, and the star is like, there's no escape, only the sweet release of death. And I'm like, wow, that was kind of pretty dark. I guess I didn't. <laughs> Did you put that. the suicidal twist on it, or is this like a Rorschach no, no, thing, no, no. or like are you seeing? Well, no, no, no. He's about to die, and he I, goes boo you're not, when he's safe. You're not wrong, <laughs> but as a kid myself, it went over my head. <laughs> so like, I think the kids are fine. Yeah, um, and just like. Justice for Chris Pratt. I don't care if you fucking hate him. Do people the, fucking hate? I Chris tried Pratt, though. Even Pratt. this morning, you I was tried like, to hate him. I woke up, I looked myself in the mirror, and said, "Fuck <laughs> you, no, Chris so Pratt." I was like, and let, I, did, "I didn't take." No, I was like, "Let <laughs> me go on a deep dive of why people hate him so much." So I was like, on these websites that like put together this whole like thing of why people hate him, and everything's like allegedly, supposedly he did it, this that can't yeah. be confirmed anywhere. And I'm like, <laughs> people just love to hate somebody that became super successful. Like well, he's the biggest movie star in the world. And so they hate him for it. It's not, they don't hate him because he's super successful. They hate him because they feel like his value system is in contrast to theirs. Because he grew up hunting. It's like, so did half of America. I'm not fighting you, just so you know. <laughs> I know, but okay. I'm fighting right. the people. Like, it just drives me crazy that people want to, like, hate him so much. It drives me crazy that, like, the polar ends of these spectrums are just so vehemently opposed to each other that they don't realize that they're doing exactly the same fucking thing to each other. It's crazy. And it's like nobody's allowed to just exist anymore. And it's almost to a degree of which freedom of thought and freedom of expression is just completely abolished for fear of cancellation or offense. And it's like a fucking bummer. I just don't think it needs to be brought to this. It's like he's starring in a kids movie. I didn't even. He's an actor. Like, I was he's like, an actor, guys. I looked like, to Shane and I was like, he doesn't do anything besides that. I looked to Shane and I was like, wait, he's Mario, right? I didn't recognize his voice, so I thought he was great in it. And yeah. guess what? The next big fucking blockbuster also stars Chris Pratt. Oh so no! Buckle up if you hate What's him. What's the next he's, big one? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume oh. Three. Can we see that? I haven't seen any of them. <gasps> Should we see them? Sure. I just need a friend right now. I'm going through a divorce. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's a really hard time in my life. <sighs> okay. Icky's birthday. It was Icky's birthday on Friday. He is one years old. He's a little gentleman now. And that's it? You baked him a cake? I baked him a cake. Is it in t- your vlog? I, oh yeah it's in my vlog I vlogged about it the whole vlog is about Icky's <clears throat> birthday I baked him a cake and we took him and Mr. Bubs out to dinner at the oh. Fat Dog on Magnolia in the valley oh that's not a do- you told me it was a dog restaurant it is it's called the Fat Dog there's dogs all over the Isn't fucking walls there dogs? and you can no oh. dogs like woof woof dogs so they make dishes <laughs> for dogs well no but they'll bring you like a plain hamburger and a plain chicken breast and that's fine yeah Okay. So the boys got to share a hamburger and a chicken breast and they Cute. had a great time. Part of Icky's training is he has to go out into the world mm-hmm. once a week. So this was his socialization. It was very cute. They were good if I kept them, if kept feeding them treats. Bubs wasn't growling at everyone? No. Wow. Well, you've seen Bubs out of the house. He's good. You've seen him <laughs> over here. You know that to be true. 
He's always No, you <laughs> growl at him and then you wonder why he growls back. I think you're the problem. I am the problem. Even with Riley, like if I get bored at night, like after we eat dinner, I start like poking Riley. And then I like start running around the house to like get her to like play. like I play with her like a dog. Yeah. And we just start running around the house until I'm like, Riley, stop. Shane's like you asked for this. I'm like, yeah, I know. So, it's so She's weird my that, best friend. It's really weird that she just like jumps up relentlessly on guests when I come in the house. And, like, she's my best stop. friend. Like, I'm not kidding you when she, I tell oh. you she's my best friend. Like, oh. we hang I'm out friend, all day, I get it. Get in her face as. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love my dogs too. I get it. I wish I could bring them. I thought every morning I'm like, should I just bring? Nope. Them? Should I just bring nope. both of them and have them on this couch, little guys? Okay, so little is guy there a things. training update? Yeah. We Icky went to the trainers and we were late because I brought Joe and that's another thing. It's like I'm my, I've got a huge fucking bag over my shoulder that has like all of Icky shit in it. We have to bring a bed. We have to bring a water bowl. We have to bring two toys. We have to bring treats. I went out and bought fucking hip pocket dispenser treats for me and Joe so that we could both do the training. I've got his I've got him. I've got Icky. I had to put a collar on Icky. I had to put a harness on Icky because he needs both. Imagine when we his have kids. Leash on. This is what I'm saying. I recently saw a TikTok where a mom's got like me loaded up getting the fucking kid out of the car, falls over backwards and squishes the kid behind her and the dad's just on the fucking phone and it's like, that's Joe. She, Joe's <laughs> version of helping was, I'm going to go turn the air on in the car so I'm not too hot. I'm so gonna I'm not too hot. <laughs> makes himself two drinks for the road. Literally, there's cans in my car right now from him. That, like the cans all over the house aren't enough. He has to fucking infiltrate my vehicle. I would like in to my car now. invite you to see the passenger side floor of my car. I have. And fake it is sugar. terrifying. You can't even see the floor. No, it's all fake sugar. It's alarming. It's like, do we have an intervention at this point with the extra packets? <laughs> and I'm using a high pitch voice so that I don't offend anyone. But it's like, I'm legitimately concerned. Do you know what I'm saying? We're trying to like slow that down. He stopped for a long time and now he's back. Yeah, that's it's. Uh, it's an alarming amount of extra COVID packets. COVID made him like for like a year and a half. COVID made that sound disgusting to him. Also, like, COVID made my, like, dad, like, my dad, like, not, like, drinking a ton, but, like, he'd have beer. And now the sound of beer to my dad is, like, repulsive after COVID. Interesting. Crazy. Hmm. 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 Okay. Sorry. Maybe they need a little therapeutic beer or a little therapeutic COVID <laughs> okay. to get over these weird things. Um. So, yeah. So, we were late and we're, like, get, so we, like, rush into the building or whatever and um, the trainer likes to bring the dogs out to exemplify the training method that she's teaching us in front of the rest of the class. Mm -hmm. And she like brought out these other dogs. And then like for one, she's like, OK, I'm going to bring Icky out. And Icky was the one dog who was like, no, dude, no, nope, not going. You're not my mom. I do not know this bitch. I can't do it. I'm scared. And like just kept looking at me and Joe like, mom mom this bitch <laughs> like literally she's like okay so i guess we're not gonna use Icky as an example <laughs> and like all the other dogs she's like all right so who's been teaching them how to sit at home everyone raises their hand we're just like looking <laughs> we're just looking around she's like icky doesn't sit and it's like no <laughs> <laughs> icky doesn't even not shit in the house <laughs> you're like we really even... hear about that by the way like we don't care if he ever sits we just wish that he wouldn't shit in the house every day <laughs> <laughs> at least Riley's not doing that but I was so embarrassed because I talk so much shit to you about Riley on this podcast right. and when I was leaving the training session one of the trainers goes I'm such a big fan and oh. what, usually in a dog situation I'm like oh it's bubs and then I realized like oh, I don't have bubs with me I was like of mine <laughs> and she watches the podcast oh hello girly yeah hello I love the class if you want to come train our dog <laughs> and so I was so embarrassed was oh like, she does train your dog yeah well I don't know if he's trainable so um, it was just I was like I'm so embarrassed because I talk so much shit about Rayleigh on the podcast and now this woman knows that my dog is like incapable because of me. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, Riley is a mess though. No, <laughs> she's a mess when a person that she doesn't see all the time walks into the house. She sees me every week. Yeah, but that's once a week. That's not enough for a dog to not get like wildly excited. Like we were with Shane's brother's dogs yesterday and like they kept like feeling embarrassed that their dogs were like jumping up or like being excited. Mm -hmm. I was like, your dog's this big, like them jumping oh, what up. Is their dog? I don't even hear it because it's like Riley. Yeah. If Riley jumps up, she like takes you out. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, these small dogs, it's like they could be wiling out. And I'm like, huh, I don't even see it. What's their dog? A Boston Terrier. <gasps> oh, they You've crazy. Seen, yeah. I do love me a Boston. So cute. They are so cute. So cute. So cute. 
<laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by ZocDoc. And I know from personal experience, you're extremely unlikely to find medical advice in your group chat, but you can find it in the form of a doctor on ZocDoc. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. Finding great care shouldn't take up all of your energy. There's nothing worse than thinking, oh, I need so much help, but I can't find a doctor. And that's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. You can book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. I've used ZocDoc on so many occasions, I can't even tell you when I tweaked my back, I found a great chiropractor. When I came down with crazy seasonal allergies, I found a wonderful doctor. And you can do that too by going to ZocDoc.com slash the sip and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash the sip. That's ZocDoc.com slash the sip. Today's podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh, and with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from every week. With so much variety, there are options for everyone and every lifestyle. HelloFresh is not only for dinner. In fact, they have you covered for every mealtime occasion from snacks to easy lunches and seasonal celebrations and festive gatherings. I use HelloFresh constantly, especially on busy work days when I can walk downstairs and rely on something to be there for me that is healthy without taking a ton of time for me to prepare. And now Green Chef is owned by HelloFresh. So with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I personally love switching between the brands and now all of you can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. So go to hellofresh.com slash the sip 50 and use code the sip 50 for 50% off plus your first box ships free. That's hellofresh.com slash the sip 50 and use code the sip 50 for 50% off plus your first box ships for free. All right, well, should we get into some hot toppies? I suppose. Okay, you did good this week. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I think so. You were so. interested in this one? Mm-hmm. And quite a few of them. Okay, so apparently there's this family that... <coughs> Hold, hold okay. for nasal drip, post nasal okay. drip. Mm-hmm. Okay, so apparently there's this family that is literally. Oh, I'm just reading what you wrote down here. I'm just reading that there's a family that has not had a girl born as a direct descendant of this specific lineage since 1885. That's 138 years. Well, I know we couldn't do the math on the spot. So no, I it was thought, in the article. I know, but you didn't write it down. Oh, I didn't? Are you no. sure? Right here, you didn't. And so I had to add that because I was like, I know I couldn't have done the math. Oh, interesting. I thought I wrote that because and I knew I couldn't do the math either. And I was like, thank God they wrote that in the article. <laughs> what the fuck is a rainbow baby? So a rainbow baby is a baby that you have after you miscarry. Oh, because I keep hearing so many people being like, my rainbow yeah. baby, my rain. And I was like, is that like gay parents of a baby or like, no, I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you didn't know what if other conclusion, know, I mean, a know. rainbow's pretty fucking gay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a also baby a baby a after a miscarriage. <laughs> okay. So that's what it actually is. Yeah. Thank you for clearing that up for me. Yeah. So after 138 years, this family finally conceived a girl. That's wild. Crazy. What are the odds? Are they like a, a a family that procreates a lot? Seems like it, yeah. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> Sorry, these magnet items that go on Apple devices are very hard for me. <laughs> I was wondering, like, because so uh, when we did our embryos, four of mine happened to be girls, and four of Shane's happened to be boys. So I'm like, is there? I think there's a genetic thing there. It's just like twins. Like some people can be predisposed to having twins. Like if it ru- like twins run in your family. You know, that's the thing that I've heard people say. Wow. Yeah. And then I guess they also like held their gender reveal party that happened to be a girl and then the whole family's freaking out because they hadn't had a girl run in the family for a hundred years. Can you imagine the excitement of that? Like, oh, like I'm excited for it. And I don't even know these people (laughs) and I can't even do the math, but I know it's been a long time. And you're the second girl to bring up this story to me. So I think it was the first Jared's wife yesterday at Easter. Oh, wow. So I was like, wow, this story is really resonating with people. Yeah, it is. I just think it's wild. I think because there's a um, I have a group of friends. They're not my friends. I knew them in fifth grade. They're twins. <laughs> anyway, there's this family has three children and it's three girls, two of which are twins. And two they've all had babies now. But are, are like a, at first, the oldest daughter has had 
I think, four girls. Wow. The second daughter has had two girls. And then the third one to have children has now had two boys. Wow. Which I think is fun. I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy weird. Cuckoo nuts. It is crazy. Yeah. Hmm. How do you feel about gender reveal parties? Dude, I go back and forth because like I'm not a big party girl personally, but I do like I love the fratty moment of like, oh, so like I want to have that. It's like the surprise element. Yeah. I just don't think I'll be able to keep my mouth shut long enough to have that be a surprise to anyone. We already we already know. You've literally put it on the Internet already. I mean, I, I think because my process is different than yeah. like the typical relationship. Right. Like maybe these things are less I because even like with the pregnancy like you normally don't tell people about a pregnancy forever but like ours were like talking about the implantation because it's just a different process yeah um but we still won't know like if we do if we implant one boy one girl and say only one takes mm-hmm. we we won't know if it's the boy or the girl right that takes you know right so i should but like i feel like as soon as i figured out i'd go to the closest people in my life and tell all of them i don't think i'd be able to like not tell everyone Yeah, I mean, I had a I had a fun thing with my friend, one of my friends who she found out off of a video from a doctor or something like there's a they made this sort of like slideshow reveal of the gender of your child if you get some sort of special screening at 20 weeks or something. Mm -hmm. And we watched it or listened to it together on the phone. And it was just so it was so funny because it was like a drawn out slideshow where it's like, you've been wondering the gender of your baby. Oh, no. We're going to tell you what the gender <laughs> is. New slide of your baby. Gender can be this or that. Here we go. We're going to tell you. Are you ready to know? Because we're ready to sell. Okay, now like, I'm, getting, now I'm dying. That's literally what it was right. forever. And then we're just like, oh, my God. Like, what are they just going to tell us? And then it was a girl. Wow. It was exciting. But I do love those things. Yeah, it is very fun. If you want, I could get told and then I could tell you in a really long slideshow that drives you crazy. But I think you're going to have twins. We'll see. And I put a twist on your names. What do you mean? What I told you is swapping Parker to the boy and Victoria Jetson to Adams. Oh, yeah. yeah. She was like, you should have it Victoria. And I was like, why? And she's like, your mom. I was like, what? And she's like, isn't your mom's name Victoria? And I was like, no, just Vicky sis. <laughs> what if Vicky's like, no, dude, my name is Victoria. That would be crazy. <laughs> wow. Should you call her right now and ask? Mom, hit up the comment section <laughs> below. Call that bitch <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, no, because what if it's not, which I know it's not. How do you know? Have you seen her ID? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Call your mom right now. <laughs> well, what if she doesn't answer? That's too much. It's too much? Yeah, it's too much for wow. me. Wow, Vicky, I tried. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I think I'm down with an, a reveal party. <clears throat> but I wouldn't, it's like, it's not going to be like a real party. It's just, it's a for me thing. Right. I'm not going to ask people to come into town for it or dress up or leave their house. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> Hillary Duff's husband was kicked off of Twitter for impersonating Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, so, and it also seemed like a really mm-hmm. light impersonation. Well, so I wasn't understanding because none of the articles were like putting in an actual like screenshot of the tweet. I right. guess because he had gotten kicked off, so it was hard to find. But I did my detective work and I found it, and then it all clicked for me because he's verified. Right, he changed his profile picture to Gwyneth's profile picture oh. and changed his name to Gwyneth. So his. <laughs> handle is still his name but it presents as Gwyneth so if you're just looking quickly it does you see a verified user named Got Gwyneth it. with her profile picture and it is funny he was replying to a tweet that said I'll take my dollar now and he replied like as her being like same man <laughs> <laughs> and I guess because it's like impersonating a celebrity his Twitter got banned got it that adds up but I do think that's very funny and then he went on like his Instagram being like closure is always hard but like we'll make it through um, but I just thought it was interesting because like yeah it's a good way to troll like if you want to really like throw somebody for a loop de doo yeah I don't know what's stopping am I about to pay $14 a month so that I could impersonate celebrities all the fuck over Instagram. So is that I so both Instagram and Twitter you can now pay for a verification yeah, or Twitter I got, you just lose I, it if you don't pay. I don't I got an update on Inst- I don't fuck with Twitter so I wouldn't know about Twitter but I got an update on Instagram like for 14.99 a month. A you month? Can get, you can get a blue check mark next to your name so the people know it's the real you. It's like people know it's the real me because I'd be posting inside photos of my butthole and ain't no booty look like my booty. You know so, what I'm saying? Like 
is am I gonna have to pay fourteen dollars a month? Or you could just I start posting one? pictures of your butthole. No, but like because I already <laughs> had one prior to this, am I going to have to pay fourteen ninety nine a month? I don't know. This is a business bitch move on it, their end. It's a real like they're it's probably, a real leveling of the playing field if well, you ask they don't, me. They don't really care what's going on. They're looking at how much money's coming in a month. Yeah. That's like the biggest subscription service ever. Yeah. Everyone has Instagram. Mm hmm Wow. Mm -hmm. What are they gonna do with all that coin? They're just shoving up their butts. Because hmm. banks are failing. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> okay. Back to something less important than the failing banks. How do you find Moi? Oh. I don't, so she's an Instagram person. Okay. So first, b the biggest news right now is that Taylor okay. Swift and maybe her boyfriend Joe have maybe split up. Which... I almost broke up with Lizzie over the weekend because she just couldn't care with me enough. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> my phone's like, it's Ryland. I'm not going to notify you because I know you don't care. I anyway. kept giving her more details and like no response. And I was like, Lizzie, we've got to go find this man. He looks. Oh, well, this is rude. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. How does he look? I just don't trust him. He looks dead inside, huh? He looks a little dead. He inside. looks dead like me inside. Maybe he's just sad. Maybe. Maybe he just can't afford his old house. I just don't trust him. His husband just wakes I, him up in the middle of the night and he's just tired like, and sad. I don't doubt Taylor's lifestyle and life is hard to keep up with, hard not to compare yourself to, hard not to get in. Like, it would almost be impossible to find a good match for Taylor Swift, which is such a curse for her. Yeah. Because how do you not feel emasculated? How do you not feel less than? How do, like, you, have how to do find... you not just feel juiced as fuck to be beside Taylor fucking Swift? I understand, but there is... Like, like having your own, well, it's not a good reference point anymore because the world hates it, Haley Bieber, but it is like finding your own identity. You just have to find a really strong, secure person that isn't fame hungry themselves, that isn't going to have like a sore ego that they're not successful in that way. I mean, you can't top what Taylor Swift is doing. No, but that's not what partnerships are about. No, but that doesn't mean it would be easy because Taylor Swift's life isn't small. It's very big. There's probably a million people in her house working with her and for her yeah. at all times. And the world revolves around Taylor Swift. Like it would be hard to not feel like you're just a part of her circling orbit mm -hmm. no matter what because she's such a big business. Right. I get that. Like even the, the sturdiest, sanest of person. Should I marry Taylor Swift? <laughs> I mean, you could. <laughs> Should I pack my dogs up and move to Connecticut? Where does she live? Rhode Island? She has a house everywhere. I'll go wherever you want me, Tay Tay. Just give me a call. <laughs> Don't wake me up in the middle of the night. You know, I just want this petty little $3 million house in Valley Village. It's not a big deal. You could keep me there. You and could so, keep me and my dogs there. ET broke the story that they broke up and they had just said that the relationship had run its course, that the, it was an amicable Did they thing. say that or had a source said that? Because I saw that people mm -hmm. posted and they said, people confirms. E and then people removed the people confirms. Confirms. I have no idea. Okay. But I mean, it's. So E.T. said. Yeah. Th that the relationship had just run its course. Correct. So what did. So do, explain to me. There's um, a social media presence called Demois, which is where people can post. I so know that this is old news and other people get it. It's just a but, celebrity. It's a celebrity news account. And she. But it's like Gossip Girl. Nobody knows who this bitch is. Nobody knows who she is. And people like. With, tell her write, secrets. Write in like oh, I saw this person at this restaurant doing this or this person's dating this, I know because I'm friends with their best friend. So they DM her information and then she posts the information as though it's a fact. God, what a and sick fuck she's to like, DM a person like Demois, your friend's and private And she's details. like, Demois has to say like, none of these stories are like- Confirmed. Confirmed because it's all people making shit up. But because her account's so popular, it's like, who like- how can you trust anything anyone's telling her? Because it's like, if, you, if anyone has a vendetta out for anyone, they could make up anything and this girl will post it. And because she has a big following, it can spread like rapid fire. Mm. It can really do some damage to people. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm saying like, who the fuck are these friends that are dropping so secrets in the DMs? The Demoy at first was posting Demois. screenshots. Demois was first posting screenshots saying like, it's not true. And then she pivoted and posted one saying she's already dating somebody older who's uh, less in the limelight that wants less attention because like, and that's why I said, I don't like trust Joe fully. Like I know their relationship was probably strong and they kept it private for a long time. But at the end of the day, he is still an, an actor. actor. Like he still craves something. That yeah. Of like, Oh, I want to be my own being too. And it's almost impossible with that kind of ambition to 
live inside of someone's like you can't even imagine what it's like to be taylor swift mm -hmm. and to live inside of her world like it takes a very specific type of person i have a demois drop what and it's not my business to share but i'm going to share it anyway okay so i know someone who knows someone who was previously taylor swift's personal assistant are you serious yeah okay and apparently taylor is a dream but mama swifty is a little gnarly and one Thanksgiving, Taylor had ordered a bunch of plates and didn't like and the assistant gets a call on Thanksgiving Day from Mama Swifty saying there are like still the price tags on the back of these plates. Can you come over and scratch them all off? I'm scared I said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have it on good authority, though this is just alleged <laughs> that so-and-so said such and such about you know who. Right. Yeah. It's crazy to me how other people will treat people. I'm not even saying in that story specifically, yeah. but recently I've been hearing a lot of stories about like oh, celebrities and how they treat their assistants or how they, and it's just like, I can't believe that we exist in a world where it's possible to treat another person with that kind of just like disregard to oh, them being a human. A laundry list of dehumanizing events that have happened to me as an assistant. <clears throat> I worked for this woman who refused to wear tampons for some reason. And one time she bled through her pants and was like, can I wear yours? And I said, yes. I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe she, if she had, did she have like the biggest meeting of her life in five no, minutes? No, she was barely employed. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but this happened multiple times. <laughs> Even if you were groomed and you came up the ladder being treated like that so yeah. you're like oh this is how the world works i still don't understand how you couldn't be like have zero empathy for that person having not only been there yourself before right but just like interacting with them on a day-to-day -day basis where you treat them as though they're nothing it is interesting. It's wild it's interesting i don't think it's that treating them as they're nothing it's thinking that i pay for this time where you owe me these actions during this time because I guess I'm paying you. I'm crazy, but wouldn't you think if the person enjoyed being employed by you, they would work harder for you? Well, you're not a sick fuck. So that's why it doesn't make sense to you. But there are, like, I would say more often than not, like, I was friends with this guy who used to send his assistant, like, before we could pick out seats to sit in, he would send his assistant to movie theaters to hold seats wow. and then send them home. Oh, not even a ticket for them no not even like hold the row you're sitting no. next to me no Whoa. he'd like have girls come over to his house calls his sister in the middle of the night and be like they want this and to eat before uber eats he'd bring it drop it on the night on the fucking doormat and oh leave oh my gosh crazy shit like people and and then honestly at the end of the day they're like and they want a raise now it's like they do everything for you wow. like it's wild it's wild I didn't sign an NDA for the person that I'm talking about, which is why I feel. But you're also doing not it. saying who it is. No, not that anyone would know who it is. But um, people are fucking crazy, and I really do believe that it, the, it, it in their heart of hearts, they're like, "I'm paying you, so this is fine." And they might also just have very low empathy in general. Oh, they're not. They're not normal people. Right. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. <sighs> Of course, she all re all roads lead back to Jamie Lee Curtis. You couldn't have just taken the actual story. You had to get Jamie Lee reacting to the story. <laughs> I love her. I know. I bet Jamie Lee is nice to her assistants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used to sell her juice at the Brentwood Country Mart. And was she nice to you? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Was she, you probably served her? Maybe. I probably didn't know at that time who it was. Probably not. <laughs> okay. So, um... Carol G calls out photoshopped magazine cover from GQ Mexico, I believe it is. Yeah. So she basically posted these photos on her Instagram saying like, this is not me. She's like, I'm happy with my body. I love the way I look. And this has been retouched and I am not artificial intelligence. And it seems I, I did like that touch. Like, yeah, we're I like not AI. She's like, we're not AI. We're people. And I think that that's so true, especially now that like deep fake is becoming an e like an ever growing problem. And like, we're all terrified that AI is going to take over our jobs and like Elon Musk sending letters out to the tech tycoons of this day and age saying, please pull back the, the AI. But it's like we're still retouching our images as if being human isn't enough. 
Right. And I, it seems like there was some back and forth between the two of her asking to not move forward with the retouched image, mm -hmm. which is where I find the big problem. Like if you sent it to her for approval and she didn't approve it, like going forward with it is ludicrous because she's saying, I want the natural me to be projected to the people who might look up to me. Mm -hmm. um, this photo specifically, she did like a side by side of like her not touched up and her touched up. I didn't personally it's see slight. much of a difference. It's slight. Like, but like, go off, girl. Like, it, but I, I, I can tell. Like, I've had pictures come back, and it's like, should I get a rhinoplasty? No, the sentiment <laughs> is something I stand behind. Like, if you're collaborating with a magazine, I do think that you should get final approval yeah. on the cover image um even because a lot of times you're doing more for the magazine than the magazine's doing for you because nobody buys magazines anymore yeah. so i do think that they should respect that and on the standard of just like body issues in general mm -hmm. but this cover i was like as a spectator i can't tell the difference like girl you look good in the photo you posted that wasn't touched up i couldn't see a difference personally yeah but that's just me yeah but I, yeah, no matter what, I like the sentiment. Yeah. And I like that she's like dying for it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, no, there's a difference. Yeah. And I do not stand. Go off, girl. Go off, girl. Oh, Rob Lowe gives his son a five-year sobriety chip on the, the... Drew Barrymore show. Drew Barrymore it's like show. You, <laughs> I can't... I, don't, I can't see. I you know. always hand it to me and I can't fucking see. I don't know what you want from me. Well, she puts in the hyperlinks, so it's like really confusing to read the headline and if i was due diligent enough i'd make my own headline but i just don't but then you read it as though it's the url you're like i'll have that i'll have a headline i'll add a headline okay 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 and i'll write it in bold and i won't out i won't highlight so it in black <laughs> rob lowe and his son were promoting their new show i think it's called unsatiable on mm -hmm. netflix have you seen it no I've been a little bit disappointed by Rob Lowe's choice in shows lately. I watched one about him and a dog that has like a severe illness that goes missing. And I was like, this has to stop. So I can't watch Rob Lowe's stuff anymore because I can't <laughs> trust that it's not going to break me when I'm already broken. So this, I believe, is a sitcom starring himself and his 28-year-old son. God, don't you wish our dads would do that for us? Crazy. Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> fuck man you couldn't rob Lowe me into a good job rob Lowe, even inside of this interview rob's already sitting out on the couch and he's like drew's like why don't you introduce your son and he's like welcome my mildly talented semi-funny son <laughs> and he's like gee thanks dad it's like well your dad gave you the show so yeah do you need much else which is also funny because i remember in the past when like the university scandal was going down rob Lowe was like my kid got himself into this and it's like he Rob just, Lowe was a part of that? No, like Rob Lowe's like, I'm just so glad my kids do, aren't a part of this, that they like earned what they got. And I'm like, now I'm wondering, did they? <laughs> and can we uncancel Lori Laughlin by now? It's been enough time. I mean, come on, dude. She she paid her, t like, yeah, they, we, we get it. We know these people are privileged and awful. Let her fucking live. Just let her get some movies again. <laughs> I know she just like did a no. Christmas movie, but just let her live. It's not like she was ever making anything of value. Shut up. Was she? <laughs> Shut She's up. making shitty Christmas hey. movies. Am I wrong? Is that not what we want to do? No, it's definitely what we want to <laughs> okay. do, but it's not like it's of value. We don't need to do what we want to do well, to save going, society, listen, and neither does Lori Lachlan. We've been going back and watching Full House, Shane and I, recently. Uh -huh. It's fucking good. Yeah. 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 Let her back on Full House. Justice for Lori. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> TikTok's gonna kill me. I'm done. <laughs> and your daughter too. Whatever. I said it. I mean, <laughs> that, I mean, I like. I understand it was crazy, but like, come on. There, like, what do you expect from? I them? mean, if I'm a big old fan of all the Laughlins. Okay. Watch them all cancel me. They're like, Ryland. <laughs> this is the end of me. Sorry. <laughs> if there's never another podcast episode, it's because I stood up for the Laughlins. <laughs> We've been saying their name right. I'm like, Lachlan. <laughs> Lachlan and Lars. Olivia Jade Lachlan. None of them are Lachlan. <laughs> <laughs> they're so important nobody okay. knows their name we names. missed the whole point of the story we were oh talking his about. dad gave him a chip for five years of sobriety right. and drew barrymore has been talking about her struggles with alcohol on the tv show recently and um yeah beautiful it, it is i think it is beautiful i think it's an interesting i i don't know i think it's really interesting because of all of the i don't know like i struggle to kind of talk about it but i do think it's um it's really cool to watch different versions of sobriety 
play out publicly. Mm -hmm. Like it's really interesting to hear all of these different experiences and walks of lives and what works for one person and what doesn't work for another. And I think that it's really beautiful that um, we're now championing recovery as opposed to hiding from it and acting like it's awful to have to have to be a person who has addiction and alcoholism and i think that that's really cool yeah yeah i think that it's like you know um there is a stigma to being an alcoholic and Mm -hmm. i do think that that's also important you know it's not great to be an alcoholic a, a person in active use and um but to be a person who works really hard in pursuit of recovery recovery is incredible. And you can't be that person if you're not also this other person. I also think there uh, you should take so much pride in your recovery because I think you like go through therapy boot camp in addition. I think I feel like you become <laughs> is I, that bad? No, I'm laughing because it's like to me, it's a little funny. It's like, thank you for not being an asshole anymore. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, for sure. No, for me, like, Uh, thank you for not being an asshole. Like, thank you for working super hard to be a functioning member of society. You know what I do? You well, no, I just that's why I think it's a little funny. A lot of things that I take from you, I feel, are very profound, and a lot of them are things you've learned through your journey in recovery. Oh, absolutely. And so that's why I say that sentiment. Yeah. No, and I I do appreciate it. The only reason why I'm laughing is it's because like, (laughs) right. Sometimes it's the bare minimum, which is still better than less than. Right. But I do think it's a little funny. It's like, I woke up today and came to work. Like, where is my applause? <laughs> Can you please hit the yellow button? Because <laughs> I am here. Okay. Um, and I guess Rob Lowe, I forget how many years he said on the show, but it's like five. 29 or 30. No, oh, it's his Rob's, son. right. His son's five. Yeah. He's like 29, 30, maybe. It's like a lot of years. Yeah. No, and it's incredible. And Drew Barrymore's, you know, back on the wagon. She had to go to recovery when she was 13. And she's talking about, she said, like, I discuss with my kids how like mommy can't uh have alcohol she doesn't respond well to it yeah and so i do think it's important that people are bringing it to the forefront because i think everyone has a family member or knows somebody or is Mm -hmm. affected by alcoholism or drugs um even if it's not you or your immediate family yeah and i just also want to like because this last week i celebrated four years of actual recovery right whereas before that i had just been alcohol free with no work right and there um for me it's a it's an astonishing difference like i cannot drink alcohol and i'm still going to be suffering emotionally which is how i know my problem is spiritual and alcohol was a solution for pain i felt inside Mm -hmm. so not only do i not have like not only do i have to not drink i have to work on what's what's going on inside me to feel well it is infinitely easier to exist doing this work that i do on myself than it was to exist numbing myself. Wow. It is easier to do this work than it was to drink and use to numb the pain. And not only that, but it's like every day I woke up wanting to die and every day I wake up wanting to live and kill my husband. (laughs) So it's different. (laughs) Okay, before we go, what is this about Kylie dating Timothy Chalamet? (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) So... This would be crazy. Sorry, it tickles me to the core to I think about. I feel like she like break. He's fra- he like I looks wanna, fragile. He's like dude, a skinny that's boy. That's what I want to talk about, and I feel like it's not cool to talk about. I feel about. like it's not either. But as a fragile boy myself. Okay, so Stassi's dating a fragile boy. Who's that? Jaden X. I don't know. Is either it Jaden X? Or does he just spell his name with an X? It's getting so hot in here. I'm actually feeling flushed in the face. But so Stassi's dating a fragile boy. And then Kylie's seen out and about with Timothy Chalamet, who, by the They're way, hanging out like actually they were just out? photographed together in an event. Oh, and so there's no reason to assume that they're together, but I do feel like their personalities mesh hella good. Like they're both goofy weirdos and they're both like they're both weird. We don't see a lot of Kylie's oddities, but she's funny and she's weird. She was looking so good on Easter weekend. She's always looking right, dude. Those <laughs> girls are always looking good in photos. Always looking right. Um, so the internet starts like busting a nut over this fucking the accusation of Timothy Chalamet and uh, Kylie f- fucking. And honestly, like I would live for that pairing. <laughs> but one person was like, it's like when you see two people from your high school that never spoke six years later and they're like pregnant and married. It it's is weird. weird. It's weird. It's weird. And it happens all the time. You're like, how did they meet? <laughs> how did they meet? Like, what? Crazy. Um, 
But I do love that. And then someone else is like, you know, Chris Jenner made this all happen. So the social media would talk about it instead of talking about Haley Rowe Bieber. And it's like, Chris Jenner's in her 60s. Have you met a woman in her 60s who's like that savvy with social media and, if Chris and was, youngsters shit? If she was going to do this, you better believe she would have done it before that trailer dropped so it could have been included. Oh, absolutely. Because that trailer needed some oomph. Yeah. Oh, my God. Even fucking Chloe's admitting she's like, well, I can't name, tell you the name of my son because it's part of our new show. It's all we have. <laughs> but apparently her literally all we have is that Chloe's son's name starts with a T and we don't know it yet. <laughs> <sighs> but we will all right you guys well i hope you enjoyed today's episode of the podcast uh, follow us all on social media lizzie posted a vlog yesterday hopefully our vegas vlog will be going up my version Ooh. of it this week your version of the vegas vlog is already live it's already live follow chris on instagram uh there was a new episode of the shane dawson podcast yesterday and check us out on tiktok i'm gonna have rylan do an interesting sexy little move before i leave the house today the sip podcast over on tiktok and we'll see you next week we love you very much goodbye and, and that's, that's the, the sit. sit.